Well, obviously, you know, we're excited for this campaign. We started practice yesterday, and these guys were very, very saddened that they had to leave this morning's practice halfway through. I've never seen them run off the field that fast. But uh, it, it's, it's going to be a very, very good football team. Um, you know, we have a great group of young men and they've invested the time. We break modern day football down into three phases, okay? The off-season weightlifting phase, January to late April. The spring football phase, which is on the field. We pretty much run our regular practices during the 15 days of spring football. Then our summer program, which is enhanced by the passing league. Uh, season the tournaments that we uh, had tremendous success in and then the real deal started yesterday the fall and when I think about these kids you know these are four outstanding football players that I have with me that you have the opportunity to speak with you know I, I spoke about Bryce uh, in the in the uh, coaches forum and you know it, it, I mean, how, how do you begin when you have such a great player? Um, and, and you guys will have questions for Bryce, and I'm not going to repeat, you know, the accolades that I've already spread about him. Nate is coming off a tough year last year as a junior, uh, had a big impact as a sophomore two years ago, and, and is, has had a great offseason and, and is training hard uh, as kind of a linebacker slash safety uh, over here on my left Dean Neely our, our starting inside linebacker had some action as a sophomore and made a major contribution last year and he is back and then the big man down on the end Miles Miles is uh, he's a man on fire right now because he suffered what as a coaching staff as, as coaches, you hate to see happen a season-ending broken leg um, in, in the Jay Sarah game. And I've you know, had a lot of discussions with Miles. Now we've turned him loose and, and you know, he's possessed. Uh, you, know, you take something away from a kid and you get the harsh reality of an injury that almost ends your career. Uh, you're, you're just grateful for every day. He doesn't care whether it's hot, cold, raining, or whatever it is. He just wants to practice because of the time that he missed. And then we've got a, a stable of players back at, at the high school. You know, people talk to me about uh, the, the, the Monarchs and the schedule. Um, you know, I... I, I mean, I'm going to tell you, I, you know, I can't get games. It, you know, it, it, you know, Catherine and I, my director of football operations, Catherine Peterson, my daughter, you know, at, at one meeting, I, I finally said, who's the idiot that scheduled us to go to Phoenix for one game and Washington, D.C. for another game? Well, the idiot's me. But that's what you have to do because there's nobody in Southern California that really wants to step up to the plate. But I look at it as a challenge. Um, you know, these boys and, and the players that are back at camp right now, they came to modern day to play in big games. They came to modern day to, to you know, be featured on national television, to be featured on Fox uh, national television and ESPN. And that's what we're going to get. Um, I don't get nervous about where people are ranked, you know, I have no control over that. It doesn't bother me. Somebody said, well, how do you feel about being the number one team coming out in 2019? I feel great about it. It means I've done my job, you know. You know, we, we, we've built this thing, you know, we're a national brand, and, and now we just have to go out and defend it. But we also, it's high school football. We gotta go out and have fun. But what would you rather do if you're a football coach, you know, go play Sisters of the Poor or go play a St. John's or, a, or, or the, the St. Francis of Maryland or, or the, the teams in our league, you know, that, that's a challenge. And, and we're in it to coach, you know, we're in it to coach. Yeah, you know, this new 
format that the CIF's created. People asked me, well, what did you think about, you know, the new 18 division? I looked at it, I think it's a negative for us because it took a game away from us. First of all, the revenue we're going to lose because we're only going to get three playoff games. And secondly, we coach football to play on Friday nights, you know, and, and, and unfortunately, we lost a Friday night no matter how you skin the cat. So, you know, but, but this football team, the chemistry is incredible. Uh, the leadership is incredible. You know, just a sample that, that's up here at this table. Um, I, I tell them, I'm brutally honest with my football teams. I like the way they play together. Uh, I saw, it, you know, it, it, the offense is supporting the defense. The defense is supporting the offense. And I think that's important. And, you know, you know, if, if you've been around modern day football, you know, myself and, and, and Coach Duran, run the special teams, but, but, you know, our special teams will be good. We've got great kickers, great snappers. So, you know, you put that together, we're excited for, for the journey ahead and, and we can't wait. You know, yeah, we're opening up against Corona Centennial, one of the perennial powers of, of Southern California. But what better way to find out what you got? That's how I look at it, you know, it, it's, you know, we got to be jacked up, teed up, and, and, and ready to go. So it's going to be an exciting year. Uh, we, we look forward to the challenge of the season, the non-conference the non games, and then, and then the Trinity League games are going to be exciting. Uh, I truly believe this. On any given Friday night, any Trinity League could beat another. So you can't let your guard down. Fortunately, you know, you know that my staff, my, you know, defensive coordinator, Eric Johnson, has been with me for, you know, 26 of the 31 years. My offensive coordinator, Dave Money, has been with me all 31. You know, we just plug in. We do what we do. We have fun, coach them up, and, and look forward to big games. And we got a lot of them coming at us, especially early in that preseason. Anything else, Tia? Thank you, Coach. All right. Them, they're not too happy about that, uh, and you're playing them in an opening game where, on occasion, they've done well against you. So, what, what's your thoughts about this game? So, has Eric asked the first question for every team? <laughs> you know what, Eric? Uh, you can't think about last year. Uh, you know, my kids know that they've got a vendetta. Okay, that that's a given. You know, we talk about our opponents and, and we spend a lot of time, you know, in preparation for our opponents. We've broken everybody's tape down, you know, through the course of the spring and the summer. And obviously we've studied our offense and defense for the tweaks because we don't do things the same. You know, we're, we're going to take the offense to a different level because of Bryce year, Bryce's one year of experience, you know. On defense, you know, you look at your personnel, you look at their personality. Uh, you know, it's a new season, it's a new team. Um, you know, we have had success against them early, okay, and we've also, you know, uh, fallen to them. Uh, but it's a great challenge. Logo have his kids ready and we'll be ready. It's the first game, so who knows? You know, you got to get through the early jitters, okay? You got, you know, uh, the younger kids, but that's where I'm lucky, Eric. I got nine guys coming back on defense. I got eight guys coming back on offense. Been there, done that. To them, you know, let's just go tee it up, okay? We, we spend a lot of time in preparation, and we're going to be ready for the first game just like game 10. Um, well, yeah, it's definitely uh, exciting for me, um, you know, to have that confidence and that support that I have from Coach Rollo, from the rest of the staff. Um, it, 
it, it's really big for me, um, you know, to kind of, you know, there's a lot of challenges throughout the season, throughout the year, um, throughout the off season. Uh, they have to work on and, and push through and to have that confidence, that support um, at my back is really, really a lot. I know however I'm feeling or, you know, however things are going to know that I have a staff and, and teammates that support me and trust me and the decisions I make and things that I do is a lot for, you know, means a lot for me. So uh, I'm definitely uh, grateful for the staff that I have. For me, uh, it's for sure like the f uh, the funnest position in the football field. Uh, like blocking for Bryce, blocking for the running back receiver, like we're the we're like the reason why I think we won games. To be honest with you, like we don't get any of the quote unquote glamour, but I think we get. Uh, are we just we don't deserve it, but <laughs> you know you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Hundred percent, hundred percent. That was my right leg. Bruce Connor Morissette, Scoreboard Live Radio. Jerry Connor. Last year is last year. I have one quick question about the second St. John Bosco game. After losing to Bosco in the fashion he did, coming back that second game and executing a game plan to perfection to beat them that second time, where did that coaching job for you rank? Uh, it's a great question. You know, I, I want to mention one thing with Miles, um, you know, and I'll come to yours. Uh, Miles has a great supporting cast, too. And, and that's another thing about this team. You know, the offensive line with, with George at center coming back with a year of experience, Ty coming back at, at, at the guard position. Okay, it's, it's their, their unity, their brotherhood, and, and he's the leader of the offensive line. And, and you know, he does a great job of motivating the rest of them. He's a work ethic guy. Ty is the, the vocal guy, so it, it's been fun. You know, it, 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 I'm glad you didn't bring up how bad it was in that first game. Um, you know, that, that was an embarrassment. Uh, I never saw that coming. People have asked me a thousand times, you know, did the rain have anything to do with it? No, it rained on them and it rained on us, you know, and it was thunder and lightning on them and it was thunder and lightning on us, you know. We just we just got slapped and we got woken up good, you know. I think you had a football team that went in overconfident, thought they were going to roll them up and, and forgot that it's St. John Bosco and it's, you know, I... I went into that locker room after the game and everybody said, oh boy, you must have been mad. I said, no, it was gut check time. You know, and basically I challenged them, you know, and said, this is not rocket science. From this point on, you've got to win every game. Okay, if you can win every game, you have the opportunity for a rematch. Okay, so stop crying, stop acting like you're a bunch of little babies, dry your tears up, go back to work. But what had happened was, is they had swayed from the plan. They had started to do things their own way. The intensity level in practice had dropped off. Okay, the f attention to detail had dropped off because they beat IMG, okay, big deal, okay. It was a preseason game. The game that counted, they, they took it upside the head. Now the rematch comes and, you know, we, we, we put them in a position that's why I have so much confidence in my coaching staff. We threw some stuff out. We looked at what we needed to do. We threw caution to the wind, okay? We brought everybody from different directions, and the game plan was impeccable on both sides of the ball. And I'll be honest, it was, it was one of the better wins. I don't like to try to beat it. You know, beating a team twice is difficult, okay? And I think it's ironic. I have great respect for Jason and his program. You know, I beat them in, in league in 16, and then they tuned me up in, in, in the championship game. I just reversed the tables on them. But now it's a new year. Now it's time to think about, you know, Corona Centennial and the challenge ahead. But. Uh, you know, it, 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 was a, it was a big win. And, and all of these guys were major factors other than, you know, with Miles being hurt, uh, you know. But they know what they need to do this year to take care of business. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
to Dean Ely. Coach is talking about Eric Johnson. I've known him a long time myself, too. From your standpoint, what, what makes him such a good coach? Um, from my standpoint, he's a genius. He has, he has so much experience with his 11 years in the NFL. Uh, he just he knows what is supposed to be done with the defense in certain offensive situations. He, just, he knows everything. He calls the right plays. I've tried to give him suggestions for play calls. He's like, no, no, we're running this. And he ends up being right. And the play he calls, the play I would have called <laughs> would have been a little bit. Eh, and the play he calls is always perfect. So. And he's, just, he's always prepared. He's, when we watch film, he goes into every little detail. We'll watch each play about, I'd say, over 20 times. Just keeps rewinding it, rewinding it, going on each different player, offensive and defensive. And then tells us what we need to do. He's a genius. Uh, Bryce, you know, there's so much people talk about it. A lot of seven on seven ball all the time. And what are the, the pluses and minuses of so much offseason for us? Um, you know, I, I think there, like you said, I think there's definitely pluses and minuses. Um, I think there's a big plus when you're playing seven on seven with your school and with your team to kind of build that chemistry and, um, and, and that brotherhood and come together and start to compete as a team against other schools. I think that's the biggest plus of seven on seven. Um, I think um, from a, a quarterback standpoint, I think there are people who can who can throw too much, especially when you start bringing in, you know, the um, the seven on seven that's with you know other programs, not with your team, kind of that club seven on seven. Um, but you know, I think people should, especially quarterbacks, should put more of an emphasis on kind of shoulder health and care and and being responsible with how much you throw because it could definitely have an impact for you know the long season you play ahead. Um, throwing a lot could definitely have an impact as a quarterback. And um, also, I think if, if you put too much stock into it and, and think about it you know, more than what it is as more than just you know, a place where you can compete and get reps and, and work on stuff and come together, if you try to put too much stock, especially in, in the club 7-on-7 seven seven, or, or winning and, and changing things for 7-on-7 seven seven that wouldn't be realistic to a real uh, football game, I think that's where you can kind of get to the negatives. But when it's used um, in moderation and used correctly, um, I think there's definitely benefits to 7-on-7 seven seven as well. Yeah, um, yeah, we definitely have a good relationship. Uh, like you said, we, we train together. Um, we, we've known a lot of the same people and, and been in a lot of the, kind of those same circles. Um, and and he really, he's just, um, I have a lot of respect for him as a person and as a player. Um, he's someone who works really hard, uh, a great guy to be around. Um, and, you know, I have a, a tons of respect for him on the field and what he can do um, on the field. Um, like you said, I think it's very rare for, um, you know, two of, you know, quote, you know, quote unquote, the top quarterbacks in the country. And, uh, playing for those, you know, the top teams in the country to kind of be close and and um, have those, you know, work together as much as we do. And uh, I think it's just a really cool opportunity, um, you know. And it also kind of speaks to, especially in Southern California, uh, the football circles are are really small. Um, you know, you kind of know everyone, especially in the Trinity League. Um, everyone's whether it's, you know going to the same school or, or camps, uh, you know, uh, college visits. You kind of run into the same people everywhere. And um, you know, you, though, you, everyone sees the heat of rivalries of Friday nights, especially between us and Bosco. And um, you know, within those lines, it's, it's very serious. You know, it's it's war. You're, you're in there with your brothers. But um, you know, once the game's over, and especially in the off season, um, it's all everyone's kind of working towards that common goal of you know winning and improving. And, and you respect each other for that. And I think there's um, for how much intensity there is on the field on Friday nights, there's a lot of love outside of the field uh, and respect for each other and, and people we play against. Thank you. And Bruce, as the head coach, what are your thoughts on that relationship between uh, DJ and Bryce? You know, I'm glad you're pointing out the positives. And, and, you know, as Bryce said, you know, if you watch the interaction here today, okay, I think you saw the respect that the coaches have for each other, the friendships that they have with each other. 
Um, you know, and, and, and all bets are off on Friday night, okay? But that that's, you know, I, I watch and, and, you know, then I watch the interaction of, of the kids here today, and, and I think it's special. You know, the, they, they do respect each other's abilities. They know each other outside of this crazy game of football. You know, I, I knew um, when Bryce came to Modern Day, you know, that, that I, I talked to him a little bit and, and, you know, he was close to DJ, you know, and, and but I, you know, the whoever, you know, JT was close to some of the other guys because they, they compete, but yet they have all that other time. Um, you know, he, he was, you know, was number one at the rivals thing, okay? So, but yet all that downtime, he's with those guys. And, and you know, I think that's special stuff. And, and you know, if, if a kid doesn't have that, it's not the right kid, you know what I mean? If he's all arrogant up and, and you know, full of himself, it, that's gonna come back and bite him. You know, we, we, we pride ourselves on developing the entire athlete at Modern Day High School. And, and you know, there's an example of what we're talking about. You know, yeah, it's, you know, on Friday night, you know, Bryce is gonna hopefully have higher statistics and we're gonna push him to higher statistics. But when it's over, that's the last thing he's gonna talk about to anybody, whether it's his own team or, or the opponent's team. Uh, thanks for bringing that up. It's actually, uh, it's great because um, I was going to mention it. Bryce, going against him, you know you're not going to go against a quarterback like that. I'm playing free this year, and you know even a DB coach just mentioned to me, um, he said, I was putting myself in your shoes trying to read Bryce's eyes, and I really, you know, you're going back and forth over the field, stemming this way, stemming that way, because he's looking you off constantly. And you know, um, it's great experience. Um, he puts the ball in the perfect place most of the time, so you have to make perfect breaks, and you basically have to be perfect on, a, on the back end. But our DB coaches do a great job of preparing us. And um, yeah, but it's uh, the offense with Coach Money. I mean, we're making adjustments every day to their offense. And then as soon as we make an adjustment, they counter it. So it's basically like a game of chess. So, um, but it's really great to go against them, and it uh, prepares us well. One more for Miles, too. You were part of that offensive unit two years ago that was you know, one of those legendary offensive lines. Um, can this unit be as good as that one? I definitely think so. Uh, all those guys are three-year starters. Uh, most of our guys are two-year starters uh, with George, Ty, and Muka. And Donovan being, Donovan being a transfer, which is uh, which is big. Uh, he's really good. He's going to be really good this year. But I think we can live up to, this, to those expectations that, that we set two years ago. I know Coach Rollins said you're very busy during the school year, but this year many of your uh, former players are going to be at USC and UCLA. How are you going to handle trying to have some fun watching them and following their exploits? You know what, Eric, one of the, you know, we, we enjoy Saturdays, uh, you know, because we can turn on a game wherever in the SEC or, or, or you know, whatever conference, and usually we'll have a player or two playing. Um, obviously, you know, our numbers at, at, at SC and, and at UCLA and UCLA has increased. Uh, it makes it exciting. Um, you know, you're going to call me for my yearly prediction, and I've always predicted the Trojans will win, you know, because I played football at USC, so I'm going to make the same prediction I always make. But, um, it, you know, I, I just, I'm so proud of those kids and the success that they're having at that level. Um, you know, it, 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 it definitely makes for excitement when you're watching the games on Saturday. You know, and there's JT at quarterback and Amon Ra and, and, you know, those guys getting after it and Murray over at UCLA and, and, and Quint and those guys. So, you know, what I like if I, you know, once in a while can't attend a game, I like to watch after the game, though, because I guarantee you they're right together. 
the first guys they'll go to are their brothers from modern day, you know, and, and the hugs and the respect is, is, is just, it's awesome. It's awesome. And, and like the question over here, I mean, they're going to do the best they can to beat the crap out of each other. But, you know, at the end, you know, their, their, their roots are, are pretty deep uh, being former monarchs. You know, Miles, I'm looking at this, uh, your list of uh, college offers. And, uh, uh, so, why Washington? What, the, what, uh, what swayed you that way? Uh, Washington, uh, the coaching's amazing up there. Coach Pete's a great dude. So is Scott Huff, the offensive line coach. Uh, the scenery is beautiful up there. Uh, the business school is really good up there as well, too. And I, I want to major in business. It's like all positives. I didn't really see any negatives uh, looking at Washington. Thank you so much, uh, Modern Day. You guys are done. They'll be available for additional interviews and photos um, if you would like to take some more.